Aristotle. The lucid understanding of nature started in Greece with pre-Socratic philosophers. Since the Archaic period, which was somewhere around 650 to 480 BCE, it was Thales from Miletus who refused to accept any mythological, supernatural, or religious explanations for the natural events that happen around. Instead, he said that for every event, there was a natural cause. Thales was successful in many progresses and accepted water as the basic element and experimented with various subjects like magnets and rubbing amber to form cosmologies. Thales has been named as the father of science. There were many after Thales like Anaximander, Heraclitus, Leucippus who challenged each other's theories and it was Democritus who finally discovered the theory of atomism. His theory said that all the things in the universe were composed of indivisible and imperishable elements known as atoms. This was a milestone in the history of physics and to a much evolved atomic theory of today, as everything revolves around the atoms, their size, state, arrangements, etc. Aristotle had discovered physics in a much detailed way. His writings and works and his student led to the discovery of the laws governing the physical phenomenon. In India, the philosopher Maharishi Kanada was the first to uncover the systematic theory of atomism in 200 BCE, which was further detailed by two Buddhist atomists, Dignaga and Dharmakriti. The theories of Indian philosophers were merely based on logic and void of any experience or experiments and were therefore considered as non-concrete and entangled. Later, in 499 BCE, astronomer Aryabhata offered the theory of Earth's rotation through his works Aryabhata. Shen Kuo from China has been accredited with the study of magnetism and described the magnetic needle compass. Later on, he developed the camera obscura, device which later led to photography. Ibn Sina, a famous polymath from Uzbekistan, then Bukhara, made many important contributions in the fields of optics, philosophy, physics, and medicine. Ibn al-Haytam is considered as the founders of modern optics. Works of the Muslim scientists like Abu Raihan Biruni and Ibn al-Haytam traveled to Europe which was studied by the scholars. The awareness of historical works entered West by translation of Arabic works to Latin. This reintroduction of works was merged with Judeo-Islamic doctrinal explanations and the medieval European scholars were greatly impressed by these works as they wanted to reunite the philosophy of the historical theorist with Christian theology. Mechanics the science which is related with the behavior of bodies when force or displacement is applied and the consequent effects of these bodies on the surroundings is known as mechanics. Or we could frame it in an easier way, the science that is concerned with the motion of physical bodies under action of forces, inclusive the time when a body is at rest. This theory further leads to studies of various topics such as electricity, magnetism, and gravitation as per the nature of forces connected. Considering the fact that one can pursue the manner of how the bodies move when these forces are applied, this is actually what mechanic means. Mechanics was the first among the few exact sciences that was developed in the ancient times. The internal beauty of mechanics as a mathematical discipline and its early extraordinary accomplishment in accounting an incomputable facet for the motions of the Earth, of the Moon, and other terrestrial bodies had huge effect on metaphysical thought and gave motivation towards the methodical growth of science into the 20th century. There are three branches which mechanics can be divided in. Statics deals with forces acting in and on a body which is at rest. Kinetics that endeavors to clarify or forecast the motions which will occur in a certain state. 
kinematics which defines the probable motions of a body or structure of bodies. On the other hand, mechanics can be distributed as per the type of system studied. The most simple of all mechanical systems is particle, which can be described as a very small body which does not have any internal structure or shape and is of no importance in the definite problem. The motion of a system, which has two or more particles which apply forces on each other and perhaps endure forces applied by bodies in the external of the system, this is a more complicated situation. The principles of mechanics are functional with three overall realms of occurrences. The motion of universal bodies like planets, stars, and satellites can be foretold exactly many years before they can happen. The theory of relativity foretells some deviancies from the motion as per the Newtonian or classical mechanics. Nevertheless, these deviations are too small to be observed without proper techniques, excluding problems which involve a big part of the noticeable cosmos. As the second domain, ordinary substances on Earth which are of microscopic size, which move at a speed that is lesser than light, are explained by classical mechanics without important rectifications. An engineer who structures aircraft and bridges might use the Newtonian laws of classical mechanics with assurance even if the forces seem to be complex and the calculations do not have the minimalism of celestial machines. The behavior of electromagnetic and matter radiation on atomic and subatomic scale encompasses the third realm of phenomena. Even though there have been many achievements earlier against the description of atoms where classical mechanics is concerned, these phenomena are appropriately used in quantum mechanics. Classical mechanics studies the motion of physical bodies under the effect of forces or with the steadiness of physical forms when all forces are stable. The topic may be assumed as the expansion and use of basic suggests first articulated in Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica by Isaac Newton, also known as Principia. These hypotheses are known as the Newton's Law of Motion. It is amazing to know that even though the three laws of Newton, momentum, angular momentum, and conservation of energy are not deliberated to be essential or precisely correct, they continue to be true in relativity and quantum mechanics. Force in modern physics is not an essential perception anymore and mass is the only one among the many traits of matter. Angular momentum, energy and momentum continue to be the center of attraction. The enduring significance of these philosophies congenital from conventional mechanics might help to elucidate why this topic preserves such great prominence in science currently. Genesis of Mechanics Nicolaus Copernicus changed the view of people about how they thought of universe in his book De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium Libri, six books about the revolutions of the heavenly planets. Copernicus mentioned how predicting the position of planets would become much simpler if Sun instead of Earth, would be taken as the center of the cosmos. There were certain problems with the theory of Copernicus as he did not explain why the motion was not apparent if Earth was spinning on its axis. Italian scientist Galileo Galilei provided with an answer to this. He experimented with motion of balls on inclined planes and concluded that physical bodies do not require approximate reason to be in motion. As a substitute, a body moving in the horizontal course would incline to stay in motion except something obstructed it. This is why Earth's motion is not ostensible. Everything on Earth and surrounding it are in motion together, which is why they seem to be in rest. Many theories like Galileo, Descartes, Kepler, and other prepared the stage for Newton's impressive synthesis he additionally gave to the world the theory of universal force of gravity. Newton also published his book Principia, in which he set out his basic hypothesis regarding motion, mass, and force.